Uh, my name is Sanaz, I'm Zafran CEO, and I'm here to talk to you about the latest trend landscape. Uh, a little bit of knowledge, not trying to sell anything at this, uh, at least the first 15 minutes, just the last five minutes it would be selling. Um, and uh, to shed some light on the recent attacks that changed, maybe are going to change, right? Uh, the landscape for cloud and non-cloud as well. So um, fortunately or unfortunately, I had the chance to be in both sides as an attacker and architect of hacking, but also uh, as an incident responder and threat intel person in Mandiant five years. So I have five years in Mandiant, so which was acquired by Google uh, lately. Uh, before that, I was in cyber reason, and before that, 15 years in the Israeli NSA. Um, it's all about, and the yin and yang is there because it's all about looking at the attacks and the breaches from the from the eyes of the attacker, uh, and trying to actually block the attacker while he's trying to get from the cracks in your environment. Okay, the landscape. There has been maybe three tectonic changes during the last two years. The first is the cloud uh, intrusion attempts. Uh, I remember 2021, uh, I was in Mandiant, I, I was trying to find some ways that the attacker is getting in, in the cloud and there was not that much. They tripled themselves from 2021 to now, this is one. The second one is that uh, it's not just very um, advanced APTs, attackers that are trying to do that, also cybercrime. And a lot of different bundles of vulnerability are used to, uh, to hack cloud. The second um, change is AI-based attacks. Today, uh, we are witnessing simple attacks, but more efficient ones. Uh, the ones that AI, um, AI is used by doing better phishing and better fake sites and advanced operations. Uh, but, it's, but just yesterday, I, we had the chance to see in the lab that AI could be used to do exploitation for a zero day to a full exploit kit, exploiting advanced, operation, advanced uh, applications and the success rate is 53 percentage. Like a person know nothing about technology, using AIs to do a zero day, to do exploit kit of a zero day, can have success of 53 percentage. I don't know if the defenders had that success with AI. So this is the second one. And the last one I wanna uh, emphasize here is doubling down on, um, on vulnerabilities. So there was those days uh, that uh, I've been uh, a hacker myself, but uh, um, counter-terrorism, and it would take us like a year to bring like a new vulnerability to exploit a new uh, software, right? And f four hours, four hours is the latest. So this is one. And the amount of vulnerabilities in RISE that it's, you also, you can weight them. Like I have a customer, how many vulnerabilities you have, criticals, 25 million. Okay, so if it's 26 million, does it matter? So uh, the surge of numbers in volumes and also the speed of getting exploited is something that you cannot um, remediate all of them together. You cannot boil the ocean. And this is the window that the attacker is using to get in. If we uh, want to try to tell you about this a little bit more, we uh, congratulations to all of us. We broke a record last year. 1.1 billion dollars cost of ransomware. One billion one. And the number one reason of that is exploiting vulnerabilities. Exploiting known vulnerabilities that the customers, that the companies knew they have it, they tried to patch it, and they didn't have enough time, right, about the exploitation window. So uh, I can talk about this like for really years, but we have to do something about this. And I'm going back to just to tell you that unfortunately, even the law enforcement trying to get in and close those hacking forums and to arrest some of the attackers, what's happening actually? They're coming back with the new names, new rebrandings, uh, and they're doing and making a good money off of it. I'm not encouraging you to go on the dark side, but it's a very good business out there. So um, let's talk about one recent novel attack I'm sorry, sometimes I get excited when I um, uh, find these kind of attacks. Like, as easy as it is, it's so impactful. So, 
Uh, I don't know if you know about any bears doing hacking, but when we talk about bears, uh, if you're coming from the Intel community, it's mostly Russian, at Russian actors. Uh, and Cozy Bear is one of the most famous ones. He's the one, actually, they are the one who um, uh, did solar winds as well. So November 2023, just a couple of months ago, um, uh, these attackers doing a spray, password spray to a test environment of Microsoft. Password spray, test environment of AD accounts, Active Directory accounts. What do you think happens? They success to get in. They success to get into a couple of employees with the password spray. But it's just a test environment, right? Maybe it's not that important. Maybe the controls are off. Maybe the engineers are above the security because they created the security, so they, not, they don't need the compensative controls. But this certain attacker, it's, it's not even a um, compromise of cyber. It's like martial, uh, martial art. What do you do in martial art? You use attacker's uh, enemy's uh, power against him. So what they did, they mimicked the same thing that the engineer would do in Microsoft. What does it mean? They got into the environment, they created a test app with, um, uh, with zero authentication capabilities, just a test, right? But since the privilege, they have like very high permissions and privilege access to any environments because they are engineers, so they moved to the production environments using those apps and compromising them and here they are in the production environment of Microsoft. It's not just that, using that specific app as a testing app, mimicking the testing app, they got to the exchange of the company. And I don't know if you know about uh, the, uh, the email uh, was leaked with the source code, source code of Microsoft uh, and very, very high executive ranks. And this is just what they leaked. There was a lot of stuff probably they have that they didn't leak. So um, it's a bundle of vulnerabilities, but, but this attack is capitalizing on human factor. What does it mean, human factor? It's a test environment, right? It's a test environment, and I see that uh, a lot more in um, attack scenarios, that the test environment doesn't have the right compensative controls that the other environment has. Because you think it's like my backdoor. It doesn't matter. It's test environment. It's not my CRM data. But what's happened here, that from the test environment, three hops, and they are in with the most impactful attacks I've seen during the last years. I'm not going to get the more power that they have, but just getting you forward, like, what does it mean, the bottom line? It could be a noble um, threat actor doing not very sophisticated attack to get from one point to another point using vulnerabilities, weaknesses. But the biggest weakness here, what is it? And, and in January, just Microsoft, it, it was in November, in January, what Microsoft reported it to the public. What's the lesson learned from here is that test environment. Password spraying is a known technique. Almost every CSPM you know out there has a protection and has alerting. What happened in that environment that the CSPM of the test environment was disabled? Because, right? For Microsoft, CSPM was disabled. What does it mean here that in a way and I can tell you from experience, attackers are looking for easy hacks. That means they are not going to attack when all the light on them. If you have CrowdStrike, Fortinet, AWS Agent on, Sentinel-1, all these things at the same environment, they are not going to get there from there. They are finding cracks in the organizations to, be, to work in silent, and they need just a couple of days to take the mission and to exfil this stuff. What we do at Zafran is exactly that. First of all, we connect to all the protection tools you have, like the posture tools, uh, from the agent of AWS to your EDR and to your vulnerability management system. Then we have different lenses, right, of inspecting that data. We are agentless. We are showing you, these are, the, these are actual numbers from one of my customers. We are showing you the control gaps, the blind spots. The spots that suddenly CrowdStrike is enabled, or CrowdStrike is there, but the kernel mode is done, 
or you have Fortinet. Sorry, this is the stuff that I'm here <laughs> that I'm seeing here, right? You have Fortinet, but the, the it's just on the detection mode, not not the blocking mode. First of all, we show you the coverage gap, the efficacy of the controls. We are looking through the uh, efficacy of the controls. What's good here? that suddenly those 25 million of vulnerabilities, 90% of them are mitigated already. So it has like the attackers has like something of like 10 percentage to get in. So do you know what is that 10 percentage of your organization? Do you know when your guards are off? This is the first one. After we find those cracks in the organization, we actually enable them with a new configuration to do their best. Sometimes we don't see that uh, uh, configuration. So we see here as an emergency patch we should do. But beyond patching means that you have already those compensative controls, why you don't enhance them to actually make it a little bit harder for the cozy bear to get in your club, right? At, at the end, we close the loop by change management solutions, automating those configurations and, and remediations and mitigations actions with some of the integrations you see there. Still, I'm not going to sell here, but uh, I like chess. I don't know if you like chess as well. Uh, and um, if you know the gambit queen, right? There is one defensive coordinator, like in football, that should understand all the controls you have and everything should be orchestrated in a way that you are actually blocking the other side, right? Not just uh, doing configuration, being aware of the enemy of the other side and how he works and how he works. 67 days, this is the average time of exploitation window. From the time a vulnerability um, uh, detected until it's exploited, uh, until it's remediated, it's getting more than two months. And the attackers are utilizing that in just a couple of days, right? Okay. Do we have time for another one? I think we have. Uh, do you know uh, Screen Connect vulnerability? Okay, Screen Connect vulnerability is again used, like uh, actors actually doubling down on this. Black Basta is using it again. Uh, it's also a cybercrime Russian group uh, to get a ransomware. And the last change, uh, health, healthcare, right, that they shut off the whole pharmacies. Uh, they paid $22 million, according to the news, to the attackers, and they still was shut off, right? So this is the vulnerability that was exploited. Our customers uh, show that in two minutes. We have this uh, celebrity vulnerability sections, like if you have, because probably your business or CIOs, am I protected? Do we have it? They, they hear something in the news. So they knew in two hours that they have it. And then we found a way, actually, to show them what is the best way, even before patch, to upstream, to, to deploy upstream mitigations. I love network devices. I love network devices. The reason for that is one change in the network device can mitigate uh, that block the vulnerabilities for thousands of assets. In this case, it was 7,582 assets. I remember that number <laughs> very good because that was the, the impact we had in that uh, thing. So while everybody is trying to understand, is there a patch? Is the patch not breaking anything? Uh, checking it in the test environment, the attackers is already in, our customers actually bought time, like a cyber dome or bubble wrap, right? The critical infrastructure and keep the attackers out. Um, okay, this is the whole event, right? We start with discovering uh, and exploitability and the risk of the vulnerability being attacked. And then we check the controls and the controls validations. We find the mitigation in most of the case that it's um, a organic mitigation inside the controls. We don't do changes that are dangerous. And then we automate that mitigation in your environment. The loop is closed. Okay, Zafran solution. A Zafran solution and how we do that. This is the most secret slide. If you want to beat Zafran, you should build it like this. If you try the other way, you're going to fail. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. And if you build it better than us, please come to us, tell us, because we want to see. So uh, the recipe here is very important. We start with threat prioritization. We check an asset with the vulnerability and what is the CVSS of the vulnerability. This is the first thing. And then we check if the actual vulnerable software is running. If it's not running, I hope you're technical, it's not exploitable, guys. Right? The attackers need a run, running software to get in. So we have an agentless runtime, uh, runtime engine that shows if it's running. 
third of the vulnerabilities here are not exploitable. Okay, this is why you should do it in an order. Then we do the whole of the fame of the security. I'm a little bit ashamed that in 2024, people doesn't know still if an asset is internet facing or not. There are so many systems, they think they have a CNTV and they think they have an architecture and always they are wrong. So we have 16 different algorithms to show if the exploitable asset and if it's internet facing or not. We have, this is the amazing moment that they understand, okay, we don't have it. After that, we have OEM with Thread Intel because this is my love and my fetish to, to Intel. If there is more than one hacking group that is exploiting that vulnerabilities, if there is more than one public exploit kit, or, the, or there is no even exploit kit, this is just the base risk. We could do a company on, out of this and it's still selling. But Risk is not risk if you don't take under consideration your compensative controls. You invested in them, you are in security, they are mitigating the risk. I'm getting crazy why you don't take it under consideration. If it's mitigated by three lines of compensation, is that exploitable? It's not exploitable. It's not exploitable. So we connect to you that, those lines of controls. We, if they have the right configurations, we actually reduce the race risk and then you have applicable risk. Applicable risk is what is actually used today in our customers to prioritize differently their countermeasures to security incidents. Okay, now the science comes in. I know it looks like a science, but we do that, so ask us for a demo. We are connected to those devices, to those controls, right? What if we can automate a certain mitigation? enhancement of the configuration. And if it's repeatable, let us automate it with, for you. Like if we are seeing zero days with a known uh, C2s, and this is the, that Intel, and this is the control, and this is the vulnerable assets. They don't connect until we do them. I'm sick of seeing CISOs getting victimized by these threat actors when they knew there is a zero day, and they knew the threat Intel, and it was not there at the same time. I'm not going to see that anymore. This is why I left Mandian to actually do that. After I failed at the, at a, at the hospital attacked by a ransomware. Uh, there is a whole story about this, just read about this. How we do that? Uh, okay, this is the second secret piece of it. I see you're taking pictures. My CTO is going to kill me. Sorry, Ben. We have a data graph. We have a mitigation uh, graph. I don't see anywhere else that they have it that we get each vulnerability, we map it to the attack vector, it's not that much there, believe me, and then we map it to a technique, right, that is exploited, and then to a control effectiveness. 25 million lines we have. How we support it? How we support this technique, this database? Uh, the new name is, is uh, Mitigation Graph. Sorry, Nick, he told me not to say database. It sounds old. It's a mitigation graph. We support it by Gen AI. Guys, we started to do that, and, and it could take like years. And this Gen AI in this time, it's in the good side of the map, right? Because we use AI to, to do a comprehensive map, mapping between vulnerabilities and to your controls. This is our IP. I have just one last thing for you. I know not all of you are 100% cloud. What do you do with the non-cloud environment? You do a cloud solution. We do also have it in, uh, uh, in Zafran. I think in a business, this is the best business uh, decision we ever done. Uh, we do have a SaaS solutions connecting API based uh, to your uh, servers until you get them to the cloud eventually. So this is, um, a behind the scene model of how we do that. Um, back to the chess. <laughs> we have a chess uh, also in our uh, booth, come to see us. Uh, you should know how the other side looking at your environment. You should know how there are those cracks to get in you to your environment. You should find those controls to mitigate the risk. And for those that you don't have mitigations, I allow you to patch it. Thank you so much.